Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over how to draw a path array. Uh, very similar to a polar array and rectangular array, with just a couple minor differences in between the three. So, uh, before we get into the video though, if you haven't checked out my channel, I have a bunch of playlists that involve problems and solutions, regular tips and tricks, and just how-to videos. So, if, this, if you find this video interesting and you like it, check out the rest of my channel. But, other than that, let's get into the video. Alright, so before we begin drawing a path array, we have to kind of set our object that we want to array up for it to um, kind of run along the path that we're trying to array it on. So, for this example, this circle is right here, but we want it to, the center of the circle to run all along these arcs right here. So you kind of have to visualize how you want it to look before you hit the path array button, but since I want that center of the circle to run along there, but I only have one circle, we need to move the circle. So we're going to make sure our center of the circle here in the object snap is on. It is on. We're good to go. So we are going to actually move this circle. Enter. Gonna grab it. And then we're just going to bring it down to this corner right here. Okay. So now that we have it on the path itself that we want to array it on, now we can go up to the array function. So how we're going to do this is it's in the modify box underneath the home tab. You're going to want to click the down arrow, and it's the second one down. So right here we have the path array. We're going to click that, and it's asking us now to select the objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the objects that we want arrayed, which is this circle right here. I'm going to select that, then click enter because that's it. Then I'm going to select the path curve. So this is where you want it to array on, where you want these objects to go. So the path that you want them to go is going to be right here. We're going to select that. And as you can see, it arrayed to that path. So there are a couple different options. And once you array that or once you enter, we're going to enter right here, you can see that the array creation ribbon comes up. But we're going to enter and it goes away. So that is how you essentially create a path array with objects. All right, so just like the rectangular array, we can also make updates to this path array. And we can update the amount of circles, the amount of rows we want, and a couple other things. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and click on the circle. And then it's going to bring up the uh, array selection ribbon. So obviously from left to right, you have your type, your items, your rows, levels, properties, options, and close. And right off the bat, we're not going to use levels. Levels doesn't change much unless you're in the 3D realm. So for this example, we're just going to show you how to change between the items. So say I want to add in a couple more items, but I want them in two... Uh, unit variable or increment I can go there press there we go and all of a sudden I added more items because there's two inches or two units in between so we're gonna actually change that to four uh, oops, sorry four Click enter and there we go now we're gonna go up to our rows and say we want to blow this out one or two so we'll just go two right now click enter and as you can see they follow along the same path as these original circles so you can actually move them up or you can uh, keep one row down you can have as many as three four really as many as you'd like and as kind of uh, specific as you want it to be but you can also change these by moving this around too so right here I've moved that little um, toggle and then I can move this up as well and I believe that gets you to more rows so I added three uh, a little bit quicker than going up into the array selection tool. If there's a point that can be snapped to as well, that's a great option. But again, that's very base level options for the path array function. All right, so there are a couple other things that you can do with the path array function. And to give you an idea of what these, uh, what can be done with the array function or path array function, instead of using circles to array along this path, we're going to use a square this time. So we're going to create the array. We're going to go back up here, create the array, enter, select the path right there. And we're going to go into the uh, array function setting because as you can see, these squares are kind of all jumbled all over the place. So there's a couple different things that you can do here to make them look nicer. But the big one is going to be um, the align items button. So as you can see in the properties, we have a couple different things we can do. We can adjust the base point. What this does is it just redefines the base point, allows you to reposition the first item of the array relative to the start point of the path curve. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to align the items. So this button right here, 
will allow you to change the orientation to all the same. If you have something like a square or a different hexagon or an octagon, any sort of polygon really will allow them to change all to one direction. So we're going to click that button. And as you can see, all the squares are facing upwards, if you will. This Z direction has a lot to do with 3D, so we will not be dealing with that right now. But again, the align items. The other thing to note is that you can actually, when you're changing the distance between, I can either change the distance by the measure, which is what it's on right now. So that's allowing me to change right here to measure it. Or I can drop that down and go to divide. So what divide is going to do is it's going to divide it equally along the path. And then it's going to space them out accordingly. So I'm going to click divide. And as you can see, along the path, it's an equal division among that entire thing. So the path curve is right there. It starts a little bit up right here. Then ends right here. And these are equally divided among themselves with that. So you can either do measure or divide. It's really your call and, you know, kind of what you're using the path array for. But that is uh, another option for you as well. All right, so the last little bit of stuff we want to go over and we want to cover is the options box, which is right up here. <clears throat> so the options box has an edit source, replace item, and reset array function. And the first one is going to be the edit source function. So this one's kind of tricky, but basic at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to click it, right? And we are going to select item in the array to edit. So for this one, we'll just go right here. And it's going to ask us to edit source objects of the associative array. We are going to have to go into a specific editing box. So as you can see, once we click OK, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, there is a Y, X, Z um, coordinate plane that has changed colors. It's this weird, funky 3D type look. And this allows you to know that you're in this editing view now. So, for example, when you're in this editing view, you're only selected array, but can go back here. So we want to add a circle, since we're editing this, we want to add a circle to all of the squares, but we don't go, want to go one by one. We want to just add one and allow it to autofill all the other ones. So we're going to go circle right here, go in the center, make a little circle. And as you can see, it autofilled all the circles into the squares in that array. Once we're done, we need to go to array close. We need to type that in and we're going to click on it. Then it's going to ask us if we want to save the changes to the array objects, which is the circles that we created. We're going to click yes. OK, so the next option. And as you can see, too, we're out of that array editing uh, space. You can see the lower left hand corner, the X, Y, Z coordinates are now regular looking. So the next option that we have too is we can replace items. And how we're gonna do that is we just click on it. It's gonna ask us to select the replacement objects. And we're gonna wanna replace um, certain squares and circles on the path array with uh, this polygon. So we're gonna select this. We're gonna click enter. We are going to uh, select the, point, the base point of the replacement object. So right here. That's the base point. We're going to select the item in the array we want to replace. Click right here. And as you can see, it brought that down to the center point of that polygon. We're just going to replace the one. So we're going to click Enter, Replace. And now we're out of that. So we've replaced one of the array shapes with the polygon or the pentagon, I guess. And we're going to get out of there. We're going to escape. And right there, as you can see, we are free and clear, but that is still on the array. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to reset the array. And what that does is brings us back the square and circle combo. So again, the options box is kind of confusing. You just have to be careful when you're in it. And actually, I'll link another video. But if you want to watch my other video for the rectangular array, I go into a little bit more detail, the edit source, replace item, and reset array buttons. And the last thing we're going to see with this array is just how to close it. And that is the close button right here. You can either press escape or close, and it's going to get you back into your regular AutoCAD view. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Uh, if you like the video and like the content, subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more videos like that. kind of stated that previously or earlier in the video. But, um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. If you have something you want to see, leave it in the comments below. I would love to make a video about it. But past that, thanks for watching, and I hope everyone has a good rest of their day.